Today is Friday, April 19th, 2024, and I'm going to read again. I know I've read it every morning this week, but I, I want to read again Job 1, 1 through 8. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. The man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. There were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters, eat and drink with them. <clears throat> and it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them, rose up early in the morning, offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou? Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth, from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and eschewth evil. And Satan, Satan answered the Lord and said, doth Job fear God for not? Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land. But now put forth thine hand and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan in verse 12, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only on himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So I'm not going to talk about the rest of the story of Job, but I'm talking about why do godly people suffer all week long. So now I want to tell you, because we gave you seven reasons why we suffer. How do we approach suffering? How do I as a believer approach suffering? First, Think through why you're suffering. Is it some action you took that there's a consequence and this is, it, this is it? Is it an attack of Satan? Is it spiritual warfare? Is it emotional, mental, whatever? Is if it's something you need to learn, or something you need to repent of, something you need to trust God about, then make the adjustments in your life. And I would say to you, just don't overanalyze it. Just go to God in prayer and say, Lord, here it is. I'm going to rejoice in you because you're the God of my strength and my shield and my buckler. But I'm trying to figure out why I'm suffering. Would you help me, Lord? And if you don't give me a reason, if I don't understand it, I'll still trust you. Second, when you suffer, you approach suffering by confirming to yourself that God cares for you. Hallelujah. He does. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 10, for we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. So I'm gonna keep trusting God even though I had a lot of despair, the Apostle Paul said to the church at Corinth. So always confirm to yourself that God cares for you. Thirdly, we always need to turn to God in prayer and seek his face. I want to read this in the New King James Version. It's Psalms 34, 4 through 8. See, if we turn to God in prayer and seek his face, wait for God to deliver you. Here's what it says. Verse Four through eight in Psalms 34. I sought the Lord and he heard me. He delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were eight radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Oh, praise God. Get on that promise now. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. So we approach suffering by turning to God, praying and seeking his face, and then go to something like Psalms 34, four through eight. This poor man cried and the Lord heard and delivered him out of all his fears, all of his trouble. Fourthly, get into the word of God and find comfort and the rhema word God has for you. I love Psalms 91. I've memorized it multiple times in my life, have to keep re-memorizing it. But I'll tell you what, 
Get to a scripture and cling to the scripture because the word of God is eternal. So when you face suffering in your life, no matter what kind of suffering it is, whether it's persecution or physical suffering or satanic attack, just go ahead and get into God's word, stand on it. And then find a promise. Number five, find a promise of God and stand on at that promise. Here's one that's so clear in 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. What that scripture says to me, I want to stand on a promise that God gave me in his word. So I'm in the word, but then I'm going to have to Claim the promise, seize it, take a hold of it for myself. And remembering this while I take that promise, God's grace is always abounding to you. More and more. He is merciful and gracious, slow to anger. And he forgives us. Hallelujah. Sixthly, I think sometimes when we suffer, fasting may be needed. Fasting may be needed if this trial or this trouble or this suffering is long term. We may need to just get intense about seeking God. Daniel fasted in the Old Testament because he sought the face of God for a reason that he might find an answer to the questions that he was seeking. And I don't know, but that God may choose to reveal to you what you need when you deepen your dependence upon him through fasting. I think sometimes fasting is radical. It's saying, God, I've got nowhere else to turn and God's looking at your heart and he's taking mercy on your soul and he's saying, son or daughter, I'm caring about you. I want to reveal this to you. Seventhly, if you are sick, if you are physically sick, practice what the word of God says. And in James 5, 14, it says this, is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And verse 15, and the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he hath committed sins, he will be forgiven. Wow. So if you're suffering physically, do what the Bible says. Call the elders of your church. You're going to church, right? Call for the elders of your church. Call them to your house if necessary. And they're to anoint you with oil, lay hands upon you, and their prayer of faith shall raise you up in your sins if you've committed any will be forgiven you. Glory to God. Finally, know this will pass and it's going to be over. What you're going through is going to be over. It's not going to last forever. It's temporary. Revelation 2.14 says, God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There'll be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There'll be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Glory to God. Come on, let's get on this. There's a day coming when all the suffering will be over. In Romans 8, 18, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And yet, myself, probably all of us, when we suffer, no matter the sphere of our life that suffering is in, we consider that suffering to be too long. But it is temporary. It is temporary. It will pass. God will fight for us as we trust in him. Don't lose heart. Don't abandon your faith. You're going to come out of this trial. You're going to come out of this suffering. You're going to come out of this difficulty refined for the glory of God. Father, I'm praying for endurance, patience, trust, praise, and rejoicing. For the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. Give us an eternal perspective about life in Jesus' name. Supernatural, that something happen with that today in each of us for your glory. Amen. Grace and peace all over you. Be stirred in your heart today toward Jesus. Get in his presence. God loves you, cares about you. Have a great day.